Hey guys, Rebek here, main tank for the Short Bus Riders, and welcome to the fourth of the six tank guides that I will be making. As per the Brewmaster Monk video, I made a poll between Guardian Druid and Protection Warrior. The vote was Guardian Druid, so I made the Guardian Druid first. And now for the losing choice, the Protection Warrior. This tank, I'm going to go ahead and be real with you. It's actually the worst tank in the game right now. However... If you're playing for fun, if you're looking for a fun tank to play, even if you do not care about the effectiveness, this is one I could recommend if you're looking for the fun of a tank. The tank, it is a, it's fun, but not effective. But some people have the passion to play a warrior anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and do this for those who really, really actually want to play the warrior. So let's get straight into it. The first thing we're going to look at... As always, is talents. But before we do that, I'm gonna I'm gonna go over the basics once again. Again, don't get hit in the back. Keep all the threat. If it's your turn to tank taunt, make sure you can keep threat. There's a little bit, there's a little bit of threat explanation in this video a bit more because of a certain issue I've been dealing with while gearing this one. But I'll get to that as I go through with the talent section. Anyways, back to the talents. So. If you're looking at this first line, we got Shockwave, Stormbolt, Warbringer. In a raiding situation, none of these are really too useful, to be honest with you. They all are stun-related, and you can't exactly stun a single-target boss in a raid. So, not really much to work with here in a raid, but in Mythic Plus, I prefer Shockwave. Um, as it sends that way before it's in a, in a cone, whatever, it does AoE damage. But if it normally the 40 second cooldown. However, if you do it and, and it hits at least three targets, regardless of whether it stuns or not, it reduces down to 20 seconds. It's still 40 because there was no targets. If you're looking for Mythic Plus, Shockwave is the way to go. Stormbolt does a little bit more damage and does a stun, but it's on one target. So this is not as good for Mythic Plus, even with the damage. Because you want to be stunning that entire six-pack mob. That mob is six-pack or whatever. So I'd go for Shockwave anyway. Seeing as there's going to be situations where in AoE fights, even in raids, Shockwave will prove useful if there's heavy ad game. Second line... I, the, the most common pick here is Inspiring Presence. You, Within 60 yards, you pretty much give everybody the buff that lets them heal for 3% of all damage they deal. Essentially, that's 3% leech for your entire raid within 60 yards. Some rooms aren't even that big, so the entire raid's getting this. Imagine, so yeah, pretty much imagine giving your entire raid 3% leech. Even, which is pretty good for utility. Impending victory is pretty is all right if you're looking for more self healing, because you don't you don't really have a whole lot of self healing other than maybe ignore pain. And ignore pain has not been has not proven useful in this expansion to be honest, but it does give some HBS because absorbs count on the meters now. But impending victory will convert your victory rush to it. Normally victory rush, when you get a killing blow, it will it will proc. And when it procs, whatever you hit with it, you'll do damage and heal for 30% of your maximum health, which is actually kind of a lot. But you can only get it if you get the killing blow. An honorable kill or assist will not get the proc. You have to get the killing blow. That's why this ability is not that great. But Impending Victory turns it into something you can use more often. C getting the Killing Blow will reset the cooldown, but you can use it without having to kill something. It, it's a little bit weaker than the Victory Rush, but again, you don't have to get the Killing Blow first. Safeguard, it, pr it pretty much makes your Intercept a bit more useful, which is okay in some situations. But I would rather give my entire raid a 3% leech. Because that leech is permanent. This is not. Renewed Fury. 
best served cold avatar. This is essentially a damage line. I went with Renewed Fury because it actually impacts more damage versus best served cold. However, Avatar can be used as an escape while also giving you more damage. If a fight has heavy rooting game, such as Portal Keeper sometimes, Avatar can be useful. Otherwise, I would go Renewed Fury. Best served cold is just not as useful. Because, yeah, sure, Revenge hits pretty hard. But Renewed Fury, when you, when you enrage, you get 10% damage on everything. That's your shield slam, your thunderclap, also your revenge, your Naltharian's fury, everything. Everything hurts more. So, so for personal escape utility, I'd go with the avatar or for extra damage. But if you but if you want just the extra damage, I'd go renewed fury. On this next line, all three of these I've tested and worked with. If you want more mobility, Bounding Stride is your go-to. Because not only do you get more heroic leap use, but it also gives you a speedy boosty for a little bit. Essentially giving you a Wraith, a wraith Walk type speed after the leap. If, you look at, if a fight needs more mobility, this is your go-to. Crackling Thunder is pretty good for Mythic Plus if you're trying to reach more adds. Especially since Thunderclap isn't just your AoE damage and your slow f or your generator, it also is your threat generator too. And speaking of and speaking of threat, I'm gonna get into the threat issue here to, here after I explain all the builds. Crackling Thunder is good for Mythic Plus. Bounding Stride is good for Mythic Plus and mobility. Warlord's Challenge can be good too making your Berserker Rage 45 second cooldown instead of a minute. And you can also taunt limitlessly during this, while this is active. Like, literally limitlessly. It's not like the Incarnation where it, like, you can use it as much as your haste lets you. This is just literally spam, 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 spam taunt. And also, you basically make your enemies run fast towards you while you taunt, acting as if you were a Brewmaster Monk. So this is not only a bit fun... But if you have the threat problem, this can be the, this can be the solver. So this is good for personal utility, mythic plus, or threat or th a threat problem solver. This is good for mobility. This is good for AOE threat generation and damage. This next line, there's only two choices really, and <laughs> between the two choices is basically. What general build are you going for? This is the line. Are you going for the Devastator build or the Indomitable build? This is the this is the line that determines are you trying to stay alive or are you trying to do more damage? Usually I play whatever survival builds I can. Normally. However, testing both builds on the Warrior, I have found that the Indomitable build has been completely obsolete. It's completely ineffective. Sure, you'll you'll have like that 10.2 million health when you, you when you have it. And sure, when you use the Devastator build, you won't have as much health as well. And sure, your ignore pain won't be as strong in the Devastator build. However, there is a huge problem with threat running the Indomitable build. Sure. You have more health, sure. Your ignore pain is a little bit stronger, but that little bit of a buff is not enough. That 20% is nothing in Legion. It is literally, like, nothing. The problem with Warrior is that it's is that between the choices of Devastator versus Indomitable, you, you have to have both to be viable. Like, both, like, both builds have to be one build. You have to have both of these to be for it to be effective. And because you're running the Indomitable build, you, also causing your damage to be a bit less, doing doing that little damage while trying to survive, that all see with the Indomitable build, 
you're losing out on enough damage to also be losing out on threat. If you're sitting there with a Paladin tank who's running their damage build, or another Warrior who's running the Devastator build, or a Demon Hunter tank, they will pull off you without taunting. It is so easy for those three to pull off if you without a taunt. Because your damage output is just so underwhelming when you use the Indomitable build. So, I'm going to recommend Devastate all the way. Even though, even if you want to stay alive, having having this damage output also helps with rage output. It re it just really helps. You're gonna get more rage anyway, meaning you can also use it more ignore, ignore pains. Cause it's literally, do you wanna do you wanna slow down your rage generation to get stronger ignore pains, or do you wanna set, or do you wanna just build up a bunch of rage so you can cast more frequent ignore pains? This tank needs both, but since it, but since it's separate, you should go for the Devastator build. I'm not even gonna recommend the Indomitable build, the Indomitable build at all, because of how much because of how much problems it has keeping a threat. Which also brings me to Vengeance or Booming Voice. Both are viable if you're gonna run the Devastator build. Booming Voice is the only choice if you're running the Indomitable build. But I'm gonna go. I usually go with Booming Voice even in the Devastator because it, it gives you 60 rage as well as the 25% mitigation. Actually, okay, yeah, actually it's 20% anyway. It just also does, lets me do more damage to them. That's the difference. I mostly think about the rage, which is essentially a free ignore pain, essentially. However, Vengeance can be useful too. Cause when you cause when you use ignore pain, your next revenge is cheaper. When you use revenge, your next ignore pain is cheaper. So if you're trying to, if you're trying to like save rage and be kind of a bank accountant on your rage, kind of budget it. Vengeance is pretty good. But if you just don't give a shit and you also need mitigation for mul for multi-target situations, booming voice is your winner. On this next line. I only see major use of anger management. Ravager is absolutely garbage as a tank, because even though it does the AoE damage and give you some parry, it's a one minute cooldown, and frankly, that parry is not enough. Plus it does absolutely garbage damage. So you may as well be running, really, really you may as well be running heavy repercussions if you want to do a little bit of damage too. Because you're going to be using Shield Slam already, and it's going to it's going to inspire you to use more Shield Slam to do more damage that way. But I use Anger Management because for every 10 rage you spend, your major cooldowns get reduced by one second, which means for every full ignore pain, it's six seconds reduced for for that when you use a full ignore pain. Which I'm going to recommend this one because Battle Cry is strong. Because when you use Battle Cry, your Shield Slam basically has no cooldown. And also, if you if you've already used your emergency cooldowns like Last Stand and Shield Wall, it's gonna reduce those heavily too. And that's just gonna be really nice. Because they're already three minute, four minute, and, and if you can reduce them down to less than two, then there you go. So here's the build that I've been running. What I normally used to run, I used to run Bounding Stride. That's pretty much it. That's pretty much the only major change. I used to run the Indomitable build, but then I rerolled to Devastator. Because this is the only tank that running the Indomitable build is actually impossible for me. Because of the threat problem. And there's, and there's already threat issues in Heroic in Taurus sometimes. Like during the first little bits of our heroic progression, there was there was threat bugs going on in King Garoth, which is not a fight you want threat issues. Same with high command. <laughs> There's just certain fights where threat issues are just can't happen. So this is this is what I would normally run, and what your average person would run, but I'm gonna keep myself to Warlord's Challenge in case I do like Mythic Plus and I need something to get me out of the fear, like a Moss Holes. This, so this is my personal build, but out of all the recommended talents, you can pick whatever you wish, really. 
Oh, the only re dude, but the big recommendation is I would go Devastator. The damage output makes up is a huge makeup for the lack of the of the Indomitable build, build survivability. It just doesn't add anything except for loss of threat and high loss of damage. Anyways, let's go to stat priority. So here we are with the stat priority. Again, my stats are kind of wonky because I just geared the tune and it's a warrior and I didn't frankly give two shits to be honest <laughs> since it's actually the worst tank in the game but I'll just tell you it anyway first of all you want haste because of your attack speed and spell casting speed and stuff like that you want to be able to use your shield slam procs and your revenge procs and really you're a proc warrior so there you go you could take advantage of your procs you could take advantage of synchronizing your ignore pains or cooldowns you want haste just to be able to get to just to be able to get to get to the oh shit moments faster if you need to. Then versatility equals mastery. They but they both basically hit the same value because you know versatility is the mitigation stat which increases damage and healing done by <laughs> by your mastery and decreases damage taken by half of your mastery. And then your mas Oh no, that's your versatility, my bad. The new mastery is critical block chance. Crit well, well, really, it's not critical block chance. Actually, no, it is. It is your critical block chance. Which, which, you know that when you block, you pretty much take half damage. But then a critical block is when you're taking quarter damage. And so it's doubling the block effect. Which is pretty crazy. So that's why versatility and mastery are kind of equal. One's a mitigation stat, the other is a critical block. And then of course crit. Crit's not that useful, I have too much of it. Because even though it gives a bit of parry... Unless you're running the Devastator build, critical strike is not really a thing. But, to be honest, even though it's the last stat, you actually should stack a little bit, because... Even if you're running the Indomitable, especially if you're running the Indomitable build, you need a bit, you need more crit in the Indomitable build than you're doing the Devastator build. Because of the threat issue. This, the, the Indomitable Warrior is actually a really bad tank. Like, I'm sorry. But, that's, I'm, I'm just gonna get straight out of the stat priority, so I'm, I'm just gonna go straight to, like, trinket talk. So, I have shit trinkets. I don't even have tank trinkets. That's how little time I had to gear this tune, and how little of motivation I had to get this t tune his gear. So I'm running the Fell Oil Infernal Machine. That's all pretty much all I got. It's okay though, because it gives primary stat and 4,000 haste. It's pretty good. It's your it's your top stat anyway, so it's like meh, it's whatevs. But I'm running the DPS Pantheon Trinket because that's all I got. I don't have anything else. This is not what I recommend at all. Because I was playing ARMS when I was first playing this tune, because I didn't think I was going to do the six tanks. And by the time I re-rolled him the prot, I already had the Great Storm's Eye and this Trinket. Sucks, but what can you do? But for Trinkets, I'm going to recommend Defensive Trinkets, because again, the Warrior has issues with survivability. The Dog Trinket, with the bonus armor and the versatility, can work. Because one gives armor, one gives versatility, and then of course you can grant the other a little bit of the other stat to your partner if they have the trinket, of course. Portal Keeper is okay. It gives critical strike, which if you, which could be useful because more chances to crit, Pl plus the absorption shield and, po and healing possibilities could be extra useful. King Garoth's Apocalypse Drive, I recommend as one because it gives haste and the, it makes and it makes your defensive against melee attacks quite strong. Which, as a warrior, to be honest, I know I've noticed that warrior tanking mechanical spells do less damage than their melee to a warrior. It's weird. Like I have a hard time surviving melee attacks, but yet when a mechanic spell comes out, I can do it no problem. So if you're if you're feeling that way, if you feel like your warrior tank is also having a problem with melee survivability, this trinket is for you. Best stat, 
and it works with it. The Demons Glacial at Aegis also works. Primary stat and 4000 armor at base. Also does a little bit of frost damage and slows them down. This, If it's a physical heavy fight, again, this could also be useful. Because if you use this, that's 4000 more armor. Meeting those melee hits and those physical sp and those physical mechanical spells are going to do less damage. This is this is almost a must, as well as the apocalypse drive. You, I, if I had to pick two trinkets, these two would be two of the, would be two winners. However, again, the smoldering titan guard is also strong. It gives mastery, which is critical block, and the big shield is just busted as hell. And it also, and the fact that it also does the decent damage too, helps with the Devastator build's DPS. So, if you're looking for Endorse Trinkets, I recommend Smoldering, which honestly every single tank can use it. Smoldering, Dima's, Apocalypse Drive. However, the Pantheon Trinket, Agrimar's Conviction could work too, because again, primary stat. And the taking damage part... Is, it's better on a warrior than it is like a monk. You're taking a shit ton of damage, so this can proc pretty often. Plus, it's versatility, and if you feel like you're low on versatility, this proc can help you. Plus, you know, the whole Pantheon effect where it's full heal. It's pretty cool. Amethul's Vision's good too, because it's basically the better Arcano Crystal. And then the proc is 2200 of the off stats. And then the Empowered effect is 6700 primary stat, which is absolutely busted. So Amethul's is good, Agrimar's Conviction's pretty good, Smoney Titan Guard is good, Dima's is good, Apocalypse Drive is good. You don't really have as much of a need for a magic defense trinket, but if you do feel the need to go and do and get one, it's actually sadly in Tomb. So the Reliquary of the Damned. Try to go into Mythic, and get the mythic version. It also gives a shit ton of stamina too. I'm gonna recommend it because most of the trinkets affect melee or physical mechanics, unless it's like the smoldering titan guard. But if you feel the need for a second magic trinket in case you don't want to waste your smoldering titan guard, I'm gonna recommend a mythic leveled reliquary of the damned. My death knight uses it. <laughs> My death knight actually has two trinkets that he uses. For physical fights, he uses Dima's. And for magic fights, he uses his reliquary in his defensive macro. My defensive macro interchanges depending on what set I'm wearing. So that's it for the trinket talk. And now for the legendaries. Legendaries. I'm going to go through all of them again, just like I usually do. Starting with Prydaz. Again, you're a tank. It's not that great. The, primary, the secondary stats are good and the stamina is pretty good. And it has a socket so you can put in your haste or your verse or whatever stat you need. But again, the shield is not good. You're taking more damage on this tank than you are any other. It's going to get eaten away even faster. Like, even faster. Like, a warrior is supposed to be a proactive tank, but it's super reactive. Like, really reactive, this expansion. So Pride as is probably the worst. It's probably the worst tank to use a legendary, to use this legendary on. Timeless Stratagem, I'm just going to call this the Bunny Rabbit Shoulders, because two extra heroic leaps, e meaning you can bounce around like a rabbit. It For mobility fights, is good. The stats are good. If you need the extra mobility, this is a, a go-to, but, but if it's not a high mobility fight, it's not that great. Destiny Driver. Um, this is one of the legendaries that I currently am stuck with. I only have two prot legendaries, this one and the legs. This one's pretty okay because it has the haste, it has the mastery. Intercepted attacks grant you and your tar and your intercept target a shield equal to the damage done. Depending on like when you use this, it could be pretty good if you time it just right. But if your timing's not that good it's only okay. It's more of a stat stick with good item level. The wrist, you need this. If you're looking to, to stay alive as a tank, no matter what build you're doing, this is your best in slot for survivability. 
Healing for 1% of your maximum health for every 10 rage. That's 6% per ignore pain. That's 3% per revenge. So if, so if you're sitting there, you build up your rage, and then you just go and, and dump it while you're hurt, you're going to heal decently. It, it's going to bump up your HPS pretty good, since your ignore pain's already doing it. And you could be sitting there out healing shitty healers, like I was doing. I don't even have this legendary. And I was getting top heals in a normal bug once. That one time was today. <laughs> for these for these hands. You gotta get these hands Okay, I'm sorry. Anyways <laughs> Verse Mastery which is okay. Your auto attacks increase the damage done and rage generated by your next shield slam or Thunderclap by twenty percent. This sounds like it's always guaranteed to happen. With the way it's sound, with the way it's written, it's looking guaranteed, and if that's the case, it's really strong for damage. So if you're looking to do extra damage as a warrior tank, this is the go-to legendary. Thunder God Viger, haste verse, basically making your thunderclap reduce the demoralizing shout cooldown by three seconds. This is also good for self ability, cause cause while you're using thunderclap to keep threat and do AOE damage. It's also making your demoralizing shout come back faster, which which is your free ignore pain cooldown, free ignore pain defensive. It's good. It, this could combo with the wrist, but it could also combo with some other stuff. The crafted legendary, if it's like your first one, sure, or if you just want like fucking 600 versatility, it's whatever. Sure, go ahead, I guess. But it's not that great unless you're doing things that require speed. If you're looking for a speed set, this works. But if you're not, if you're looking for pure efficiency, this is not the legendary to go to. The Blood Mirror, this is the other broad legendary I have. Verse Mastery, Shield Block and Spell Reflect gain an additional charge. Leaving me at three charge of the shield block and two charge of the spell reflect. See, the reason why you don't really need a whole lot of magic defense, unless you feel like getting the, maybe a, the trinket, is because of spell reflect. Right now, it right now it's a 50% magic mitigation, five second duration, 25 second recharge. It's actually pretty strong in magic fights like Fell Hounds or Covenant of Shivara. In physical fights, it's not that great because it's not physical damage. But in magic fight, it's actually pretty decent. So this this legendary is good for a versus magic set or for magic situations. But it also can be good because the third shield block charge, making you guaranteed block. And again, warning: blocking does not totally negate the damage; it happens it. And while while it's active, your shield slam is stronger. So yeah. You're gonna you're gonna want this if you're looking to do more damage on your shield slam, or just have better magic defense. It's pretty good. Agamar Stride, not good. Speed set pretty much is all it has. Next one, please. Safus, nice crit, pretty okay haste. Has a socket. If you're lacking haste, sure. But if you, but again, if you're looking for for a speed set, this works. Agamars and Safus is an okay combo, but it's not a best in slot at all. The walls fell. This is one I consider to be a really strong one for survivability, because for all for because for each shield slam, which you're gonna be using a lot of, generates extra rage. It makes your shield wall a shorter cooldown by four seconds. It gives good crit, it gives great haste, it gives the socket, in case you want more haste or some burst or mastery or something. Every single time you shield slam, your shield wall becomes a shorter cooldown. So long story short, if you have this, you might end up having a different rotation. But And by different rotation, I mean it, starting with the intercept, possibly demoralizing shout shield wall right away and then just go into your shield slam spam 
So the Battle Lord, this one's strong because it gives okay crit, good haste, great mastery, has a socket, and it gives the Vengeance talent for Prot Warrior. Which means if you're wearing it, it's actually strong because, again, ignore Pain of Revenge. Whenever you use one, it reduces the cost of the other. That's strong. And you can combo it with Booming Voice. Using these two at the same time is actually quite good. So that's considered a strong legendary. Insignia is only good if you got like pretty decent traits, or if it's a starter legendary. The sock, it's okay. Uh, if it's like your first, or the traits are just really strong with it, it can work. But other than that, it's not a best in slot. Archimonde's Hatred Reborn. We all know what this does. This this absorb shield is actually pretty decent, especially if you're looking for an extra defensive trinket. Whether for magic or physical. If you're looking for more magic, it also has its useless because the shield is pretty good. And of course, Amadul's Vision, it's just freaking amazing. If you're lucky enough to have one, I almost suggest rolling one regardless of what tank you're playing. Because all the stats, very high amounts of all four stats, and 2200 of the off stats. With 6700 primary stat from the empowered effect when you're actually in the raid. Busted. So that is my overview of the legendaries. Let's see, I went over talents, stats, trinkets, legendaries. Now for the final part, the rotation. Also, hi Odin. How you doing, baby girl? I mean, baby boy. So this big guy right here, he's gonna be our target dummy. He's he, he was looking at me wrong earlier, like he wanted to steal, like he wanted to steal my fried chicken. And that's not happening. So I'm gonna beat him up for trying to steal my lunch money and failing. I'm not leaving till everybody gets these hands! So of course, with, there's a rotation. It's not as specific as the Brewmaster Monk again, but... Basically, the priority is using Shield Slam when it's up. Whether it comes off cooldown or it procs. The proc or the reset is high priority. Because it does good damage and it generates the majority of your rage. So this is important. The revenge proc is important. I would mostly only use it if you, if it procs or if it's the last button you have. But because of my legendary setup, Destiny Driver and the and the Blood Mirror, I don't have too different of a rotation. But because of my talent setup, I'm gonna get into the into my personal rotation. Not that this is what yours would be, but here's what I do. I charge him with the intercept first, doing some damage, doing the intercept effect, generating 15 rage, and then I right away use demoralizing shout, especially if it's a multi-target situation, because these two make 75 rage immediately, and then shield slam puts me up to 95 rage. That's an ignore pain and a half right there, right at the start. So I use intercept, demoralizing shout, shield slam. Maybe thunderclap, and then and then spend my rage on ignore pain, and or shield block, and then when I start to get low on rage, I'll use battle cry and then spam the slam. For an example, You can also use Naltherian's Fury if a big spell's coming in, but other than that, just press what you can to try to get that proc. Otherwise, if you can't seem to get the proc, there is some downtime, unfortunately. Damn, I've got a lot more downtime this time. And then just keep spamming it, get the, uh... Rage, ignore pain, thunderclap, revenge, ignore pain again, demoralizing shout for more generation, hit the proc, ignore pain again, shield block, try to keep up the shield block if you can, I'm kind of failing at that quite horribly right now, shield slam, keep, keep up ignore pain, and shield block if possible. Also remember that your ignore pain is reducing the cooldown amount of time. So there's 
that. Also, the funnest part about running Warlord's Challenge is when I use the immune, when I use the fear immunity. Watch this. I just used like 20 taunts there. <laughs> But yeah, it's all about prioritizing shield slam, keeping up shield block, and keeping and, try, and using a lot of ignore pain. That's pretty much it. For your again for your major cooldowns, you have your battle cry for your guaranteed crit and your shield slam spam, which generates the rage to use more ignore pains and shield blocks. And again, when you're using Ignore Pain, your your Battle Cry gets a shorter cooldown because of because of talents and stuff. And that's pretty much it. This one was this one was a bit shorter because the Protection of Warrior doesn't have too much to it, and the two builds completely conflict one another. One build being totally on one spectrum, and the other one being on the other one. And the Survival one is so into trying to survive so hard. That you sacrifice so much damage that aggro is your problem. So again, I'm sorry for those who like to play your indomitable builds, but rest in peace until Battle for Razoroth. But hey, maybe you'll be more useful in BFA. So the next one, I might do a poll for this one too. I don't know. I'll have to ask the guild what they want. But the next two tanks, I might be having special guests for a debate slash guy type style the debate part being i bring someone in i get their opinion i give mine we, and either we argue and completely choke each other out and beat each other in the face or we're all peaceful kind calm cool collected while calm while calmly beating the ever-living fuck out of each other <laughs> but anyways i might have special guy i might have special guests for both of the last two I don't know which one's next. I'll have to see what the guild wants, which is either the Protection Paladin or the Vengeance Demon Hunter. Both of which are my least gear tunes who don't even have legendary setups properly and gear setups. Yeah! I'll probably end up trying to gear them first, but knowing the way I'm going, it's probably going to be Demon Hunter first, but I don't actually know. I don't know if we should get the fuck out of here. Anyways. So that's it for the Protection Warrior. Either Protection Paladin or Vengeance Demon Hunters next. I'll have to see what happens. I don't actually know exactly for sure. We'll see. So if you enjoyed this guide, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for supporting the Short Bus Riders Guild. Again, we are still recruiting, by the way. We're still looking for more DPS, maybe some backup tanks. Right now, we'll, right now we only have one ready backup who also happens to be a paladin and happens to be way fucking better at the paladin than me at, at like half of my tanks. But we'll see what happens. So expect either the demon hunter tank or the paladin tank to be next. Also, before I go, a special announcement I'm going to make is that after the tank guides are done, I'm going to make my own opinionated tank rank videos. Two of them. Why two? Because rating is not the same as Mythic Plus. So I'm going to make a Mythic Plus tank ranking after the guides are done. And then I'm going to do a raid one too. You know what? I'll do the poll for that. Maybe on the last tank video, I'll put a poll which tank rank should I do first. Mythic Plus or raid? Because they're not the same at all. Some tanks jump straight up doing one thing, but then jump straight down doing another. So when I get to the last guide, I'll let you guys decide. Both the guild and the viewers. Those who actually get something out of these. Hopefully someone's getting something out of these guides. Because it's, pr it's pretty fun tanking, to be honest. Being on the front line, even if the warrior's not the greatest... There's some people out there who have a huge passion for playing warrior. Like they don't like some like it doesn't matter if it's effective or not. Some people just have the ultimate passion of either of learning 
or returning to the game. So I'm doing it for the passion purpose, not so much for the tank job that I have. But it's for but it's mostly for those who have the passion to play it. That is it. I will see you guys on the next one. It will you will either see Pentacon the Paladin or Ezio the Demon Hunter.